Well, there haven't been very many guidelines on what constitutes a good phosphor. And obviously, by good phosphor, we mean something that's efficient, something that takes the blue photons that go in and push out yellow or orange photons and the same number of them rather than wasting some of the blue photons. The challenge is twofold, not just simply having a material that's efficient at room temperature, but also a material that retains its efficiency at elevated temperatures. Mm -hmm. And our uh, studies suggest uh, a solution to both. We have found uh, uh, through a combination of computational studies as well as experimental studies that the best phosphors have rather rigid structures. And when you look at some of these structures, it's quite intuitive to see that the structure like this one on the top left is highly connected and you can expect it to be quite rigid and we find these make better phosphors than a structure like this one to the right where these units are not connected and the structure is somewhat floppy. We think that our methods will help people find phosphors in a more rapid manner rather than a trial and error manner. Particularly, we can guess at what's not going to be a good phosphor, so we don't have to waste our time trying to make it. And uh, we can now start looking for cheaper materials from which we can construct the same rigid hosts and that, would, that should decrease the cost of phosphors. And by looking at increasingly rigid hosts, we can also start finding materials for niche applications where very high brightness is key. Things like uh, the front lighting of cars and even perhaps stadium lighting. Mm -hmm.